Hi everyone. Today in this video, we will discuss diclofenac. Diclofenac is one of the well-known drug which is classified as NSAID, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Among this category, we can find so many types of drugs belonging to the different chemical categories. Now, within the name of this drug, we can identify few of the structural features. The prefix diclo indicates that this drug is having a dichloromoiety and the infix fen indicates it is having the phenyl ring. So to this phenyl ring, these chlorine groups are attached on both of the ortho portions. That means at the second portion as well as at the sixth portion. The suffix ac indicates it is having the acetic acid moiety. So diclofenac is a dichlorophenyl acetic acid derivative. This diclofenac can be used as analgesic anti-inflammatory and antipyretic agent particularly this drug can be used in the various conditions such as osteoarthritis which produce a joint pain and inflammation which can be controlled by diclofenac and this drug can also be used in the management of rheumatoid arthritis which is a autoimmune disorder which is again associated with progressive inflammation Again, in such conditions, diclofenac can be used to control the inflammatory response. And this drug can also be used for ankylizing spondylitis. Even it is used as antipyretic to reduce the fever. In this way, for management of pain as well as inflammation, diclofenac is one of the well-prescribed enzyme. Being an acidic compound, this drug is given in different salt forms. It can be given as diclofenac sodium or it can be given as diclofenac potassium. Any of these salts can be observed in many of the formulations. Particularly diclofenac sodium is observed in extended release formulations. And it is also available as apolamine salt which is used to prepare the transdermal patches where diclofenac is absorbed through the skin. So today in this video we are going to see how this diclofenac acts, what are the important precautions, side effects chemical nature, all these things we will discuss in this video. First of all, it is the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of diclofenac. Here we can clearly observe the carboxylic acid moiety is present. So let us give the numbering. This is 1 and this is 2. So simply it's a 2 carbon acid derivative. So we can write the suffix as acetic acid. This acetic acid is attached to the phenyl ring by second carbon. So we can write this as 2 dash phenyl. Now to this phenyl ring at the second portion, this entire group is attached. What is the name of this group? Within this group, we can observe two chlorine groups are attached at ortho portions. That's why it is dichloro. And now this dichloro group is attached to aniline ring. So we can write this as 2,6-dichloroanilino. That is the name of diclofenac. Now let us see how this drug acts. On the nociceptive neurons, different types of receptors are expressed which can stimulate the nociception. For instance, one type of receptors such as EP receptors are expressed. These are the receptors for prostaglandin E2. Similarly, another type of receptors are the bradykinin 2 receptors on which bradykinin can act. Similarly, if you have the ion channels such as ASIC, acid sense to ion channels are also expressed on primary efferent neurons. Now during the inflammation, the prostaglandin E2 is more synthesized. Now when prostaglandin binds to EP receptors, it is going to be stimulated resulting in the activation of protein kinase A. This protein kinase A is responsible for depolarization and stimulation of nociception. Similarly, the bradykinin can bind to B2 receptors resulting in the stimulation of protein kinase C, which increases the sensitization of if you have the ion channels which again produce depolarization and acidic molecules can enter through acid sense to ion channels which again produce depolarization so all these mediators produce depolarization resulting in the stimulation of nociception but this nociception is controlled by another type of ion channels they are the atp sense to potassium channels these atp sense to potassium channels are having a special pocket on which diclofenac can bind now diclofenac can bind to this site such that it is going to activate these channels which results in the stimulation of L-arginine. This L-arginine is a precursor for nitric oxide so it can be converted into nitric oxide by one of the enzyme nitric oxide synthase. 
Now nitric oxide can stimulate garnel cyclase pathway through which it can release one of the secondary messenger cyclic GMP. In turn, cyclic GMP can stimulate the protein kinase G, which is a group of phosphorylating enzymes. This protein kinase G can increase the expression of potassium channels. Now potassium can go outside resulting in the hyperpolarization of the nosepto neurons. This hyperpolarization results in the decreased nosepto stimuli as well as desensitization of nosepto receptors. By this, diclofenac can reduce the nosception at the periphery. Few of the primary afferent neurons are expressed with excitatory neurotransmitters such as glutamate. Now, this glutamate can be released by calcium mediated exocytosis. On the postsynaptic neurons, receptors for glutamate are present. For instance, NMD is one of the important receptors which can modulate the nosceptive pathway. These NMD receptors are coupled with calcium channels. Now, when these primary afferent neurons are stimulated, the calcium can enter into the primary neurons, resulting in the release of glutamate. This glutamate can act on the NMDA receptors. This opens the calcium channel so that calcium can enter, resulting in the depolarization of postsynaptic neurons. In this way, the nosceptive signal is going to be transmitted to the spinal cord. Now, diclofenac can control this nosceptive pathway at central level. It can modulate the NMDA activity such that the calcium channels are going to be closed which inhibits depolarization of nosceptive neurons. In this way, pain signaling pathway is somewhat inhibited by diclofenac at central level. Apart from this, diclofenac can also reduce the accumulation of substance P. By all of these mechanisms, it can reduce the nosception. Another important pathway is on the Cox pathway. Phospholipase A2 is one of the important enzymes which can cleave the phospholipids such that they are going to be converted into one of the C20 fatty acid arachidonic acid. This arachidonic acid is one of the important precursor for many of the inflammatory mediators. This C20 fatty acid can be converted into various inflammatory mediators by Cox pathway. By action of this Cox enzyme, it is going to be converted into PGG2 as well as PGH2. Now this PGG2 and PGH2 are further converted into various mediators such as PGE2, PGI2 and thromboxane A2. All these can produce inflammation and nosception, which is going to be controlled by diclofenac. Diclofenac can inhibit the COX activity, thereby it can inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandins. At very high dose, diclofenac can also reduce the phospholipase A2 activity so that it can reduce the inflammatory response. In this way, diclofenac acts as analgesic, anti-inflammatory and antipyretic agent. But diclofenac is a non-selective COX inhibitor. COX enzyme is of two types, COX-1 as well as COX-2. COX-1 is a constitutive enzyme which is always present, whereas COX-2 is the inducible enzyme which is going to be induced during the inflammation. Now, because of non-selectivity, diclofenac can block both COX-1 as well as COX-2 enzyme. By inhibition of COX-1 enzyme, diclofenac can produce few of the side effects related with cardiovascular system, gastrointestinal system and renal system. Now let us see the precautions of diclofenac. Prostaglandin I2 is one of the important mediator which is going to show its action on blood vessels. The blood vessels are expressed with IP receptors. Now PGI2 can act on these IP receptors resulting in the vasodilatation. But in presence of diclofenac, the synthesis of PGI2 is going to be inhibited. So when this PGI2 levels are inhibited, it results in the vasoconstriction. This vasoconstriction may result in the platelet aggregation, which increases the risk of stroke and myocardial infarction in the patients. It can also increase the hypertension. So in the patients with already pre-existing hypertension or cardiovascular disorders, this diclofenac should be carefully given. Similarly, diclofenac can inhibit the COX-1 enzyme. Thereby, it can inhibit the sense of prostaglandin E2 as well as I2 at the stomach, which reduces the control on acid secretion. So this results in the increased gastric acid secretion leading to various effects such as ulceration, perforation and gastrointestinal bleeding can be observed with this diclofenac. Similarly, at the renal system, again the arachidonic acid is converted into PGI2 and PGE2 by COX-1 enzyme. Now these prostaglandins can act on the renal system such that they can increase the glomerular filtration leading to increased rate of excretion. Now, by use of diclofenac, this COX-1 enzyme is going to be inhibited, which reduces the filtration rate. So, GFR rate is going to be inhibited by 
diclofenac. What are the side effects? The main side effects are related with gastrointestinal system. So it can produce some abdominal pain, constipation, dyspepsia. It can produce gastric ulcers, heartburn because of increased reflux of gastric acid. And it can also produce some dizziness, edema, skin reactions such as pruritus, rashes, and tinnitus can be observed with this diclofenac. How it is given? This drug is available as tablets, capsules, even it is available as extended release tablets. By topical route, it is available as gel ointment. Orally, it is available as solution. And it can also be given as transdermal patches. In this way, it is available in different dosage forms. The dose of the diclofenac depends on the type of clinical indication. For the management of osteoarthritis, it can be given at a dose range of 100 to 150 mg per day, which is given as divided doses. Similarly, for rheumatoid arthritis, it is given at a dose of 150 to 200 mg per day, again given as divided doses. For ankylizing spondylitis, it is given at a dose of 100 to 125 mg per day. So that's about this drug diclofenac. In our next video, we will come with discussion of another interesting drug. So that's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.